What's going on, everybody? It is May 15th. It is a Friday. Hope you're doing well. So I actually sat down and watched Extraction yesterday. I thought it was a good film. I liked it. So much I could talk about with this, though, even outside of the film itself, because it's literally movies like this that are putting movie theaters out of business. And, you know, I I don't think it's on Netflix to put this movie in the theaters, right? It's not really, it's not on them. They're all do whatever they want with their platform. But like movies like this used to go to the movie theaters and these would be the tentpole films, right? These are the films that would hold up in between the Avengers end games and the rise of Skywalkers, you know, you can't, they can't rely on those movies to hold theaters up. Those movies are only really big hits for a month or so. And then they need other films to keep them going. They need more revenue. This is one of the reasons why theaters are in trouble. It's because of good movies like Extraction. I liked Extraction. I thought it was fun. It's almost like Thor meets John Wick in some ways. It's a good film. Really good action. Really good action. I was really surprised by it. Uh, I, I liked it quite a bit. Netflix has put out some actual. They've put out some actual really good movies on their streaming service. I think that's what's going to end up making Netflix viable because you know they don't they don't have all of the shows like all the other networks have. So good original content like this, this is what makes Netflix uh, work. However, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We're going to talk about how the movie is problematic as uh twitter is pointing out now so of course woke puritan twitter not happy with extraction They're, they've got some problems with it they think it's the it's a problematic film little issues with chris hemsworth and where the film is located even though uh no themes of a rid of religion are talked about in the movie at all uh it's apparently uh hurtful to people that practice a certain religion. So we're going to go ahead and talk about some of this. Uh, some of the people that are are going wild and crazy about it. Let's take a look. So here's where it starts. Why Chris Hemsworth, David Harbour, and Sam Hargrave, the Russo brothers, and their new film Extraction is problematic. A thread. So why do they always do this, by the way? Every time, you know, you go over to woke Twitter... And you take a look at what's going on. They always start their their big announcements as a thread. There's a thread coming. Or one of 75,000. <laughs> you know? I I don't get it. Why are you announcing it's a thread? All right. I, this is how it's, it's just... I've seen it happen so many times. So anyway. Extraction is a what save your film in which Chris Hemsworth, most well known for his portrayal of Thor, stars as a mercenary hired to save the son of an international crime lord. Yes, that is the basic plot. Oh, so there will be spoilers. I would assume there's going to be spoilers here. If you're not looking for spoilers for the film, um, don't watch the video. Uh, that said, it's on Netflix, and it's literally there if you have the subscription. So go watch it. What are you doing? Anyway, Hemsworth is an executive producer of the film. Starring in this type of film is one thing, like Brie pointing out here. This was a big problematic thing, by the way. But Kane, it means he had it funded and had creative control over a film while promoting problematic themes. Uh, Number one, I don't think he funded this just because you're an executive producer. I don't doesn't mean you're taking money out of your pocket. okay? and uh, so what if he was on there and had any kind of he didn't. And and number one, he didn't have creative control. That's not what that means as well. Literally being an executive producer a lot of the time, a lot of the times doesn't really mean anything. Sometimes it's really just a title they give to people to make them feel important. But nonetheless, that doesn't mean he first off there's not really any problematic stuff in this film and we're gonna get to that but uh this is just you know more of the blaming and the shielding for brie because remember they love brie brie they literally do look like they look at her as a savior which is funny so anyway 
The official poster shows Hemsworth solo, sympathizing with the white savior in his struggle, leaving no room for the brown actors to be showcased, even though this isn't the type of representation brown actors deserve. Uh, so, it's an okay poster. I mean, why wouldn't you put Chris Hemsworth front and center in it? He's the star of the movie. And in a lot of ways, he really is the main character. Now, I'll get to the other characters in a second. They're in the film, and there are other characters in the film. But it's really a film about Chris Hemsworth. So, of course you're going to put him front and center. Plus, you have the the wolf and the cub in this film. It's a, it's a trope of, you know, the the guy protecting the kid. You saw it in Mandalorian, right? Kind of some similarities here because they're both mercenaries and they're both protecting, you know, a child, which is what's happening in both. It's kind of the same thing. So naturally you would put him front and center. <laughs> I just, you know, some of the nitpicking that these people do blows me away sometimes. All right, so we got two hot takes here. The film was originally called Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh in the film setting. The brown actors in the film are mainly from India and one is from Iran. Having brown actors and portrayed as only being from Bangladesh enforces the racist notion that all brown people are the same, which they are not. Nobody thinks that, number one, but let's keep going. Uh, many of the brown actors betray the villains of the film. Bangladesh holds up the largest and most devout Muslim population, so vilifying them is subject to promote an Islamophobic themes. So there you go. Now, this is an interesting one. Okay. First off, I don't think anyone's watching this film and thinks all of these people are from Bangladesh or one area. I don't think that people are are really, you know, I don't think that's something going through their mind. But I've talked about this before. So what are we supposed to do? Because this was the same argument people had because... I think the woman who played Princess Jasmine in the live-action Aladdin movie was from India, and they didn't like that because they wanted somebody that was literally from, you know, whatever country that film's supposed to represent. So are we supposed to do, like, some kind of, like, testing for people to make sure, like, okay, we're going to get extras from the film. We should make sure the authentic... They're authentic people of this city. I think that that's a really stupid thing to do. And it's really nitpicking. And it just shows you that these people, you know, they just comb through everything to find something. And the other thing here is saying that, okay, well, they, they, uh, the people in this city are big proponents of this version of a religion. Uh, now, the thing about that that's interesting is not once in the film is that ever discussed or even talked about. Uh, where what these people do for worship is never spoken of in the film. Not once. There is no representation of it at all. So it's not really a problematic thing because they're not vilifying it because it's never discussed. It's so stupid. It's it's literally just nitpicking is what it is. But because that city's major form of worship is that, it's a problem even though it's never discussed or vilified in the movie whatsoever. Do you see these dumb arguments? I almost wonder if these people even, they don't even watch the films, I think, right? I don't think, I don't think this person even watched the film because if you had watched it, you would have seen it. But then again, that's also assuming that she knows how to just watch a film and have fun. <laughs> I don't think that uh, NPC know how to sit down and watch a film and have fun. So the entire time, I imagine these people are watching films with notepads and taking notes about how problematic things are the entire time because they don't know how to just relax and have fun. So uh, who knows if she watched it or not. Anyway, moving on. Hemsworth has done promotion for this film and seems careless about disrupting the civilians' daily lives while filming. So it's like a post like this makes me wonder if this account's just trolling. It's It really is hard to tell sometimes if... If these are real hot takes, because I've seen so many stupid ones that, you know, you wonder if these people are serious sometimes. So this person is complaining that he was there disrupting daily lives when really like 
so there's a whole clip of him getting out of this car and waving and all these people are recording him. It was like literally like, you know, a big event. Everyone rushes to meet him and, and it seemed like a positive thing here, but apparently this is a, a hot take, I guess. I, I, I don't know, but he literally gets out and you can see it right here. He's like saying, hello, everyone's excited. You can see everyone here like happy that he's there. I don't know. Like, this is also an economic boom for the area, by the way, because you have all of these people there uh, probably following the filming and watching it, giving the local area of business a little bit of a boost. These are usually good things for for places when people come in and film stuff. You usually get some kind of an economic benefit for it. So it's just really strange. So then she goes on to complain about him being in the movie 12 Strong. To be honest, we should have seen this one coming since he previously starred in 12 Strong, a movie that glorifies U.S. military intervention. Then she goes on to talk about appropriation from a guy who's literally from the area <laughs> and uh, says, don't watch the film because I identify as all of these things and uh, it affects me deeply. A film that you don't have to watch affects you deeply. Okay. Uh, two final quotes here. To add my thread was to strictly call Hemsworth out, not cancel, because cancel culture does not exist. His career will be fine at the end of the day, but Hollywood needs to not make this type of films anymore. Also, I think constantly hating on a particular actor actress is pointless because if they want to speak out on any issue or apologize it would fall on deaf ears so call him out but hey but making hate tweets and threats does nothing just focus on who you like after this so this is a this is a bizarre thing just like he points out here in his article oh uh, you're hating on the celebrity the entire time what are you what are you talking about um, cancel. And you're saying don't cancel him, but that's particularly what this thread is intended to do. It doesn't make any sense. Just like most of these people in general, just don't make any sense. So uh, definitely watch this film. I thought it was fun. I especially enjoy that people are butthurt about it. So that should give you more incentive to watch it. I, I do think you'll like it, especially if you like good action films. Uh, it's not a groundbreaking plot, but the the action in the film is top notch. I thought it was a great a great movie. Um, are we supposed to just not make movies in, uh, you know, Bangladesh and other areas like that anymore? Is that what we're doing? We don't make action films there now. So uh, I, I think that the people in their local economies would appreciate more films like this because it brings it brings money into the city. But I guess they don't need that there. Another thing I would think about is the fact that the, the movie is bringing eyes to your culture and to your city. A lot of people might watch this film and get curious about the culture and the area that the film was filmed in and want to learn more about it, maybe grow to appreciate it. I mean, these are things that I don't know if a lot of people really think about. I mean, who's thinking about Bangladesh before they watched Extraction? You know, now people that probably didn't even know that that was a real place might go look into it and say, Hey, this is kind of nice here or whatever. I don't know. Uh, people weren't talking about you before the film. Now they might be. I mean, these are nice. These are positives in my eye, like getting people to get awareness. Maybe there's a local issue and people can try to do something about it because these weren't something, these weren't things they were thinking about before. There's always a positive to stuff. And these people, they never they never quite understand that. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. Also, if you would, please share the video. Throw a like up. Make sure you still subscribe. Subscribe if you new. Hit that notification bell. And I will see you on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, there's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.